In the school setting there are two teachers, having opposite styles and way of teaching fire students. Teacher A believes that the focus of education should be the ideas that have lasted over centuries. They believe the ideas are as relevant and meaningful today as when they were written. On the other hand, teacher B believe that education should focus on the whole child rather than on the content or the teacher. Good morning, class. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, mom. Please stand for the prayer. Jessa, please lead. Yes, Mom. Let's bow down our head and feel the presence of God as we say, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, look upon us with love. You redeem us and make us your children in Christ. Give us true freedom and bring us to the inheritance you promise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, class. Have a seat. Is there any absent in class for today? No, mom. Thank you, Jessa. Let us now start our class. Our topic for today is all about the philosophers and their contribution in education. So the philosopher that we are going to tackle for today is Aristotle. So what do you know about Aristotle class? Okay, actually, Aristotle is more than just a great philosopher. He has produced a lot of ideas and philosophies. So the ideas of Aristotle is very important to explore until now. Aristotle was the first philosopher to seriously advance a theory of virtue ethics, which remains one of the three major, major schools of ethical thought taken most seriously by contemporary philosophers. So with all these contributions, he may have been the single most important philosopher in history until at least the 18th century. So do you know that Aristotle rejected the idea of Plato's theory of the forms? Aristotle thought simply that the best way to gain knowledge was through natural philosophy, which is what we would now call science. Do you get my point? Yes, mom. Yes, mom. No. Okay, now I will let you read the book on page 38. Additional information on Aristotle's contribution in education. I will give you 5 minutes to read, then after, I will give you another 15 minutes to write a summary about Aristotle and his philosophies. So please pass your paper after. Any time is up, please pass your paper to the front. Okay, thank you class for listening. Class dismiss. See you on our next meeting. This type of teacher is perennialist because first, the uses teacher-centered approach in teaching. Second, the focus on her class is the subject matter or the lesson, not the student. Third, the use of great book about Aristotle. Good morning, class. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Mom. Class, who wants to lead the prayer? Mom, I want to lead the prayer. Okay, Jessa, please lead the prayer. Let's bow down our head and feel the presence of God as we say, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord God, our virtuous and Redeemer, thank you for all the blessings that you have showered upon us. Thank you also for the good health that we are always enjoying. We are sorry for our faults in words, in deeds, and in thoughts. We humbly ask for your forgiveness. Lord God, please help us and guide us every day. This we ask in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jessa. Class, please have a seat. Uh, is there any absent in the class today? No, mom.
Good. Now we are going to start our class. Our topic for today is all about Jose Rizal. Do you know who he is? Yes, ma'am. He is our national hero. Yes, that's correct. He is our national hero. But do you know that behind being a national hero, he was a great poet and artist? Now, I want you to group yourself into two groups. Uh, then, search and choose uh, one of Rizal's quote or word that you like the most that is relevant in today's situation. So Then, I will give you 10 minutes to brainstorm with your group mates. After that, uh, choose one representative to explain why you choose that, that saying or line or quote from him. So, do you get it? Yes, ma'am. You may now start. Okay, time's up. Group 1, representative, please present your work. The line that we choose is, The youth is the hope of our future. We choose this because we agree with Dr. Jose Rizal. It is truly as, The youth is the hope of our future because the rule of the youths in nation building is more important than you might think. In other words, the intelligence and work of the youth will take the country on a pathway of success. As every citizen is equally responsible, the youth will take the country in the pathway of success. As every citizen is equally responsible, the youth is too. The youth has the power to change the world. They are the ones who will take over everything. That is why it is very important to educate them. Develop them mentally, emotionally, physically, morally, and spirituality. And to develop the essence of nationalism and patriotism in their mind to make them more powerful in the future. Because youth have a rule to renew and refresh the current status of our society, including leadership, innovations, skills, and so on. On the other hand, youths have also to maintain the culture of our culture. All good values in the society's development projects and many more. Importance of the youth. Youth is the backbone to any nation. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Group 1. That was a very great work. I am so happy to hear that words from you. Now, let us hear the Group 2 representative. Good afternoon, everyone. We choose the line, he who doesn't know how to look back at where he came from, will never get to his destination. This line is from Jose Rizal. It serves as a reminder of our past and what we are for and we got in the independence and that this is also a timely reminder for everyone to remember both their roots and the people who help them to get to where they are. We can say that it is still relevant in today's generation. Why? Because many people nowadays tend to forget all the hardship that our ancestors faced just to fight for our independence. They do not appreciate how lucky we are to be born, having the freedom in our life. As what we can see in our government, there are a lot of corruption present nowadays. Those officials doesn't know how to look back in our past. They do not think of the future of our country, but they only think about themselves. This kind of people would not attain the peaceful and a happy life because of their greediness 
and selfishness. If all people would just love our country and can do anything to help our motherland, there would be no poverty and hunger and many societal problems that we are facing nowadays. We will have a world that is safe, peaceful, and happy. And that's all. Thank you. Wow, that was a very good speech, Group 2. It was very satisfying to know that you are considering things like that. I can say that you have the spirit of nationalism and patriotism in you. And that was a very good thing. Thank you for all your ideas. Congratulations on finishing your task well. Now, the same groupings. I want you to create a creative presentation, any creative presentation about Rizal's life. You still have 10 minutes before our time ends, so take the time to practice because you will present it first thing tomorrow. Okay, thank you class for your cooperation. Class dismissed. See you on our next meeting. A progressivist teacher. Try making school interesting and useful by planning lessons that provoke curiosity. In a progressivist school, students are actively learning. The students interact with one another and develop social qualities such as cooperation and tolerance for different points of view. All these things mentioned were considered by Teacher B. To conclude, both perennialism and progressivism is a great way of teaching the students in different ways. The purpose is both for the improvement of the students to prepare in the future.